In this video, I'm going to show you just how far NeoVim has come when it comes to debugging and running tests. So we're going to be using LunarVim in this video, um, but you'll be able to get this working with your own config if you set it all up. I'm going to show you how this works. I'm not necessarily going to show you how to set all of the debug adapter stuff up in this video or anything like that, but we'll do that in future videos. Uh, what we're going to be doing is just showing you tests being run and debugging individual unit tests in five different programming languages just to show you how versatile LunarVim and NeoVim has, has become when it comes to testing and debugging um, code. So we have Java, Rust, Go, JavaScript, and Python that we're going to take a look at in this video. All right. So to get started, we're just going to leave a few debug points. So I'm going to press uh, space DT here. Uh, you combine this to whatever you want, but that's what I have it bound to. So we're just going to put a few. Um, I'm going to put one down here as well, uh, space DT for that. And I don't know, we'll put one there and yeah, that should be okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press space um, C and I just have a bind for testing methods here. So I have T is for testing the method. So I'm going to press T. All right, and you will see this whole UI come up that can be somewhat intimidating at first if you're not used to debugging, but I'll talk about what some of these UI elements are. And um, also, I'll link to the plugin um, that you need to get this set up. You'll need two plugins. You're going to need MVimDAP and also uh, MVimDAP UI to get this working. And with Java, the language I have here, uh, you'll also probably need MVimJDTLS to really get it working uh, correctly. All right, so what we can see is that we have our locals here. This is uh, all of the variables that are in scope. So for instance, if I come down here and you can see that we have a little menu here, um, this is provided via WinBar. So this little menu and WinBar is also clickable now. So what we can do is we can just step over here and now you'll see that, okay, I have integer eight or a is equal to eight and now int, uh, a int equals eight is over here, right? So another thing, you'll see the breakpoints. Um, so we have a breakpoint on 32, 57, and 59. This is 32 over here. I'm using relative line numbers, so you can kind of, you won't be able to see exactly what the line number is, but this is 57 and this is 59. And so what I just did was I pressed step over here. Um, in debugging, you can press continue, step into, step into will just behave as step over does, unless there is some method to step into. Uh, step out will let us step out of uh, the current context, whatever context we happen to have stepped into. Um, I'm not actually sure what this one does, but go back. This one might restart the debugger, and then this one will stop the entire thing. All right, and you can also see that we have the console over here. So we have the console. It says hi. Why does it say hi? If we actually just go up um, a little bit here, you can see that I did system.out.println hi, and then that's what happened. It printed it out there in the console. We can also set up watches. So if I come over to the watches section, we can put something in like, um, well, we can watch A, right? So right now, A is equal to 8. And I think, yeah, I change it down here uh, to 89. So we'll put another watch in here, too. We'll say A is less than, um, let's say, or we'll say A is greater than um, 67. Okay, and you'll see that we have a Boolean. It says false there, right? We also have the stacks here. So whatever current context you're in, you'll be able to see, you know, what um, what you're in. So we have the call stack here, and that's pretty much every element. Uh, you can also over here, you can uh, use this as kind of like a REPL. I, well, this is the REPL. So if we press A inside of here, you can see, okay, we get that value eight. So let's continue. I'm just going to press the continue. So I'm, when I press continue, I'm going to jump from the line that I'm at and I'm going to jump to the next debug point, which is A equals 89. All right. So I'm going to press that. There we go. Uh, through this, we also saw that the status code. Um, so I have this test. This test is actually meant to fail. So I am expecting this test to fail when I'm done. And so what we're going to do is, well, what, what this has here is it's just printing out the status code, which should be 404, but you can see that I, I have 804. So when we go to check this thing, it's going to be wrong. But I'm going to continue. I'm going to jump to the next debug point. And now look at that. A has changed. And now the Boolean for this expression here is now equal to true. Uh, you also see that it changed up there. And again, you know, if we put A here, it's going to be 89. So 
Now we'll just continue, we'll finish out the test, and this was debugging an individual test. So this file has multiple tests, so if we scroll down we have another test here. I have no debug points here, so if I run this test, if I just ran space D and then T, uh, or space uh, C, uh, for just how I have it set up, um, space C and then T, I would test that method and it would just run this test without you know stopping and doing any debugging or anything like that. Uh, you can see that we also have the ability to test the entire class, so we can test every single method in the class, but I think that's kind of less impressive than being able to go test by test with JUnit 5 in Java and just you know debug each one and run each test individually. So another thing you'll see, and this is something that's kind of nice about Vim, is that we can go down here into this DAP, right? We'll go into normal mode, and we can open up tab, new, and then we'll just put a percent sign for this, okay? And so now we can kind of go through and see the entire stack trace for what happened here. We can see, okay, well, this thing failed. How come it failed? Whatever. Um, and then we can press GT, and we can kind of move between tabs, which is kind of nice, right? We go over here. We can do a tab close and get rid of it. And then we can jump back up here. So I'll also test the entire class here. So we'll do space C. And then we're going to test the class with capital T. All right. Um, now, I got stuck in one of the methods because of my debug points. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to you know, go through all of them. All right. And so it should have ran all of them. So now if we go inside of here again and we do tab new, we should see, okay, we have our failure. And then we have one, of, we have one other test and it passed, it's got this little check mark and it worked. So actually let's go and make this test pass. Um, we'll jump back up here, we'll go to here and go to that eight, we'll swap it out for a four, okay. And then I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna get rid of these debug points. So I'm gonna do space DT to get rid of that debug point. Uh, we'll jump down here and do space DT and get rid of that one and that one. Now we're gonna run the entire file, so I'm gonna do space, C, capital T, and there you go, we got two check marks, everything passed, and it's all good. So you can see we can run tests individually, and we can run every single test in the, in the, uh, in the class here. Okay, so let's move on to Rust. Um, Rust, we, it's basically the same concept every time, but Rust is kinda cool because it provides uh, something like code lens here. So you can see I can just run this test individually. So right now if I do space LL, that's just what I have running code lens set up to do. I can press one and just run the test and there you go. It ran the test, it tells me it succeeded and it's all cool. Uh, so what I can do uh, to debug it is, I'll, I'll put some debug points, otherwise it's not gonna be very interesting. So I'm gonna do uh, space DT here, space DT there. And now I'll do space capital C and we can test everything this way, but like I said, actually, we're gonna be using the code lens. So to run code lens in uh, my config, and I think, yeah, this is built into Lunar Vim, I think by default is uh, space LL to run code lens. And then we're gonna do two for debug. All right, we got a little message there saying it's gonna take some time. It doesn't really take that much time at all. So yeah, anyway. Now we're in here, we're using a debugger for Rust. So a different, a separate debugger. I think we use code uh, LLDB or something like that is what Rust uses. It's the same one that C++ uses as far as I know. Um, but yeah, so same same exact deal. What we'll do is we can just press continue here. Now we could step into methods if there were methods. Uh, you know, all, all the kind of normal stuff that you can do with a debugger. But you know, you can just see the basic same exact stuff, right? We got our scopes, we got our breakpoints, we got our stacks, um, we can do a watch, we can do the same thing that we just did with Java, we got our console here and we can continue, and there you go, we ran one test individually in a file with multiple tests. We can also come uh, up to line, well, 62, I guess here, space LL, and then we can say, we could debug all of them, or we could run every single test. So we can run every single test with one, all right, and then you can see we had two tests here, they both passed, we're good to go, and that's it. Uh, when you're done with this menu, I have a thing to, I have a binding to turn it off, you can, uh, you know, you can bind this to whatever you want. So I'm going to do space D capital U to get rid of it. And we can always bring it back with space D capital U. And that, sh again, should be built into Lunar Vim by default. Okay, so yeah. That's it for Rust. Same exact thing pretty much with Go. We can do space LL. Um, and you could just see down there, it just ran all the tests and closed really fast. So, and I'm going to get to... 
also and, and and just talk really quick about how uh it can be a little bit different from language to language how some of this stuff is run what the capabilities that different languages have when it comes to code lens and the capabilities and the ways that just kind of like how the interface isn't always the same every single time uh, but I will be showing you something that's hopefully going to unify all testing um, for for NeoVim in the future, a plugin for that, for instance. So we could do the same thing again, space DT, space DT, okay? And then we'll do space, and I think I have one in here for debug test. Yeah, so you can see here I have T is debug test. We'll press T. Again, same stuff. Nothing special. Uh, this we use uh, Delve for this too, so you can come in here and you can do something like DLV and help. So the debuggers are always different, and this is just the case no matter what. So any like IDE kind of text editor thing, like VS Code or probably Fleet when that thing comes out, NeoVim, whatever it is, uh, they all rely on these debug, um, like I'm pretty sure it's the debug adapter protocol. It's a lot like the language server protocol. Um, but you'll get different debuggers that will have different capabilities depending on what language you're using and what debugger you're using. But a lot of it's still the same. You can see same exact stuff here. Watches, we could do the same thing. We got our locals there. All the same stuff. Press the buttons. There you go. We passed and we're done. Uh, moving on to JavaScript here. So JavaScript, this is just one small test. I think I'm using Jest here. Uh, actually, I'm almost positive I'm using Jest here. Um, if we go to the package JSON, yeah, we're using Jest, okay? So we have it set up to use Jest. Um, actually, let me go down into this. Again, it should be pretty much boring at this point. All right, we put the debug points and we do space. And I actually don't know. Actually, oh, yeah. So for this, again, because it's a little bit different, we're going to do space uh, D and then we're going to do C. So this is just debug continue. Same exact stuff. It lets us know that the debug is attached. Um, we can press play, play, there you go. And you can see that JavaScript um, is a little fancier with their output here, which is kind of nice to see this in the, in the console when you're done. All right, and Python is the last one. Now, Python, you gotta make sure that uh, when you go to do this, you have some virtual environment active. So you can see LunarVim lets you know if you have a virtual environment active. Um, you won't need to install debug pi, which is the debug uh, or the uh, yeah the the debugger, right? You won't need to install that if you're using something like Mason, which is what we use with LunarVim. Uh, you can just install all of the debuggers uh, that you need. You can just install them from here. So, for instance, if I wanted to install, I don't know, Netcore debugger, or whatever, I would just press I on it. That would install it for me and then it would put it in my path at runtime so I'd have it available, okay? And that's basically what Mason's gonna do for you. Um, if you're not familiar with Mason, it doesn't just do this for the debug adapter stuff. It has, it, it has this for like all different kinds of binaries, uh, language server protocol stuff, linters, formatters, etc. right? All right, so same thing. Let's go in here, space DT for a breakpoint, space DT. And I have these little red bugs over there. I know some people put the dots, but I think the bugs kind of look cooler. And now we'll do space C, and then we're going to do test method here, lowercase t. Same exact thing. And I, again, I'm not really going to, I mean, I could just, you know, step over, step over, step over um, if I feel like it. And then we'll just, you know, we'll finish this out. One test passed. Now, the really cool thing is, again, that I can test each method, like each um, test individually. So I don't have to run all the tests at once. I don't know how you've been debugging in NeoVim up until now or running tests, but typically what I'll do is I have to run like either all the tests at once or I have to like remember the name or just get real familiar with like how to run it from the command line or I'll usually just debug by doing print statements all over the place or something like that, right? But this gives you the ability to do it a little bit more professionally, I guess. All right, and so that's, that was basically the showcase. That's just what I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you how versatile things have become with NeoVim and LunarVim and where we're at with debugging and testing. Now, um, yeah, so, uh, well, we got the website here. You can check it out. It's over at LunarVim.org. But I also wanted to talk about this plugin that we haven't integrated with yet um, and that is probably pretty interesting. It's called NeoTest. Now, you saw that 
a few of those tests I ran like a little bit differently. Some of them I did with code lens, some of them I did with a few other things. I don't, I'm pretty sure this will standardize things a little bit. Uh, so you'll have something like just run or something. And it'll hopefully be that simple. You'll just, yeah, see it says run the nearest test and then you'll just have one simple interface for that. So I really like what this plugin's trying to do. I haven't really tested it out yet, but I think this will be a good addition on top of what we have here just to kind of simplify everything. Um, and give it a, a give it a common interface. Um, if you want the config that I used in this, so I'm using the latest um, on the rolling branch for LunarVim, and then this is my config. So you'll just go over to my GitHub, which there'll be a link in the description. You go to the LVim repository, and if you install this and then Mason install things like the debuggers and things, you'll basically be ready to go and debug all the stuff like I just did in this video. Um, we also have starter.lvim. So starter.lvim is in the LunarVim organization. So we have a few different repositories in the LunarVim organization. One of them is starter.lvim. And in starter.lvim, that's where I grabbed a lot of this code. And we have a branch for each one of these different um, IDEs or each one of, like the debugger is set up in each one of these branches. So if you go to the Go IDE and you go to config.lua, you'll see exactly how to do it just right here. Right, um, let's see, if you go to the bottom, we use something called dap go, and this is us just setting up the key binds for, uh, to run go tests or, and just other IDE related things with go, stuff like that. It just provides like a nice layer on top um, using a couple plugins. One's called mvim dap go, one's called gopher.mvim. And we have one of these, hopefully we're gonna have one of these for every single language. So we have the one for Java, uh, JavaScript TypeScript, what else? Uh, PHP, Python, Rust, so on and so forth, right? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show you there. So, And this is all the code so you can get started. Now, this isn't an exact like tutorial to get it all working, but it's just to kind of show you where we're at. And in the future, I will do tutorials. I'll try to explain the uh, debug adapter protocol stuff. I'll try to explain how you can debug like how like maybe a little more in depth on how you can debug and like how to really use all this stuff better um but until then and until we get the neo test stuff in i still think this is pretty cool i still think this is something not many people know that you can do at this point with neovim all right so that's pretty much it um i'm just going to go through a few things here so if you want to find my github it's linked in the description so uh, also, thank you to all my sponsors, too. If you want to sponsor me, you can do that over on GitHub. Uh, you can also support me over on Patreon. I'm also streaming now on Twitch, so if you want to follow me on Twitch, I'm going to stream. When I do stream, I'm going to stream on both YouTube and Twitch because I'm pretty sure Twitch allows that now. So that's why I wasn't doing it before. And then, of course, you can find me, all my links to all my socials and all that good stuff, over on my website, chrisatmachine.com. That's it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.